hanging in there and trying to stay ahead of John Bow and Russell Ingle. We'll see what Glenn Seaton can do. He's got a few guys ahead of him off row one. Greg Murphy starts from the number one position alongside Larry Perkins, then Seaton, then Bow off the second row. Third row to grid is Russell Ingle, Dick Johnson. Fourth row to grid is Alan Jones and Stephen Richards. Keep in mind, these are the finishing positions of race one. Mark Lark and Mark Poole. Then we go back, Peter Brock and Stephen White. The first drive for the Holden Young Lions. Darren Hossack and Chris Burden. Row eight, Karen Brewer and Danny Osborne. Go back to row nine. Faulkner had some problems, so too did Finnegan. They DNF. And Longhurst way back there. And Mark Scaife will not start in this second race due to damage sustained in that first one. Well, we're only seconds away from the start of heat two. I've seen that interview. Glenn Seaton was going to make some setup changes to the car to try and make it more durable. Had a bit of problem with traction during the middle of that race. They get the green light and they're away. Holden Racing Team car. Greg Murphy leads them down towards Scotch and Kerr for the first time. But there's a real tussle on for second and third. Oh, the oh. squeeze through there. Might have been Johnson who went offline. He's up on the ripple strips as they hang through here. Holding the inside, it looks like a reasonably clean start. They're three wide. Upside Dick Johnson, see Alan Jones and Stevie Richards muscling through there. A very action-packed start, but it looks like they've gone through reasonably cleanly. Alan Jones squeezed his way on the inside. There's Karen Brewer, but have a look at the fight up the front of the pack. It's Murphy. Then we go back to Larry Perkins, Glenn Seaton, John Bow and Russell Ingle, that same little threesome. Then we go back to Johnson, Richards and Jones. Darren Hossack is up there mixing it with them as well. Yeah, it's nice to see uh, Larkham coming up on the inside there. He had some problems in the first race, so hopefully he's uh, got it sorted. Really close start. Ingle squeezed his way through twice, squeezed his yeah. way around the outside of Bow, but they stayed in the same positions. Thundering down the back straight, breaking hard for Bridgestone Corner the first time around. We saw Murphy had plenty of speed on in the first lead. He stretched on Larry Perkins, opened it up as much as he liked. And the lead was out to about three seconds in that first team. Perkins now up in second position, Seaton in third. Then you've got Bow, Ingle up behind Bow, Dick Johnson breathing down the Castrol driver's neck. There's Stevie Richards, Alan Jones on the charge, and Mark Larkham in the minor 10 forward. It'll be interesting to see what the tyre situation is here because the temperature's coming up and uh, normally when the temperature comes up, the Bridgestone really comes into its own. So uh, watch out uh, in the next few laps and see if uh, Murphy pulls out at all on Perkins. Well, if things remain as they are, we could see a, uh, a duplicate of the first race with Murphy and Larry just running away with it. We'll concentrate on three, four and five. We'll have to wait and see. It's pretty important for Bow and Ingle to try and finish ahead of Glenn Seaton. The points in terms of the championship is now eight points covering the top three. Before the first race, of course, it was four. Two in between each driver. Ingle oh. has a look on the inside of Bow. Oh, and he made a little bit of contact with Johnson there. Well, you can't say that uh, Ingle's shy, can you? I mean, whatever anybody says about Ingle, he certainly does have a go. Stephen Richards tried to take advantage of that little kerfuffle too. As far as television is concerned, it's not so much the enforcer as the entertainer, is it? Dunlop on car camera. John Bow, the look from the back, the view from the back. We saw this in the first race. Russell Inkle trying every move in the book. Over, under, inside, outside, trying to find a way through on John Bow. He couldn't quite do it. Positions are Murphy, Perkins, Seaton, Bow. And we go back. Russell Inkle, Stevie Richards, Alan Jones. Isn't it, mate? Isn't it amazing how these three leading guys are running together? They did it throughout the first race, and now they're bunched up again in the threesome for the second. Well, it's so good for the championship, and I mean, normally uh, uh, it'd be sod's law that one of the championship contenders would go out of it, but to, as you say, to have the three of them together, it's uh, quite incredible. Let's have a look at an earlier incident. Here is the Shell Helix replay. Ingle up the outside. Watch Johnson. <laughs> Ingle switches oh. lines and bang! Cops oh. a, uh, a little g'day, how you going from DJ? In the shell sandwich, and look yes, at Stevie Richards. Richards yeah. Yeah. Pushed up the inside, Stephen is on an absolute flyer. He's right up behind Russell Ingle now. The Valvoline Cummins Commodore. We saw the Gary Rogers Motorsport car do very well at Barbagello last weekend. And now it's really flying. Steve was very confident this morning about the setup on the car, particularly working well. And you can see he's got those cooling vanes on the front brakes because this is very tough on the stoppers. Well, he finished eighth in the first race behind Alan Jones. His confidence is nice and high at the moment. So Stevie Richards on a roll. He's in oh. there behind Ingle. And a big blow up for Mark Markham, the Mark Martin 10 Ford. She's let go in a big way. Look at the smoke pouring out of the exhaust. He's dumped a load of oil over there. Hopefully everyone will get through without spinning. But that's a major blow up for Mark Larkham. Well, Mark, what a shame. He also had some problems here at Malala last year. He's involved in a pretty nasty incident with Paul Romano, so he's over. Race two is over for him. We go back to our race leader, Greg Murphy, the number 15 mobile HRT Commodore, and you can see there that he's pulled out a handy little gap over Perkins. 
Yeah, yeah, but I was looking at uh, Seaton's car when it comes out of the chicane onto the start and finish out of the S's. It doesn't seem to be as tail happy as it was in the first race. So any kind of luck is going to look after his tyres a bit better, or he will look after his tyres a bit better. Well, the Bridgestone and Dunlop battle, it's been on all year. The Dunlop's made this great fight back in the later part of the season. The two cars looking very evenly matched. Murphy and Perkins off in a battle of their own. And a 3.79, 3.8 second gap back to this battle. Seaton, Bow, Ingle. Seaton now just ahead of these two fighting here. Well, it's an interesting statistic that we've been talking about Greg Murphy's up and down year. No one's won more Shell Australian Touring Car races this year than Glenn Seaton, of course, our championship points leader. He's won nine, but chasing him very quickly is Greg Murphy after that last race. He has now won five races this year. This one, if he can stay where he is, will be six. It's just a shame that he's had that bad luck and he's back in the championship points. Well, exactly that. You know how many times he had the back fall out of uh, the differential just sitting on the line, you know, so he's had an awful lot of bad luck. So Glenn Seaton, Larry Perkins now 1.2 seconds behind our race leader. There's 2.7 seconds, the gap between Seaton and Murphy. So Murphy really has a tremendous setup on the car. It's very quick. Look at Bingle on the attack. Yeah. Tries to go around the outside and Stephen Richards now trying to muscle in on the action. He took advantage of that little squeeze there the previous lap. Looking for every opportunity in the Valvoline Cummins Commodore. Well, this is great for Stevie Richards. He's going really well. He is not that far behind Ingle. There's the windscreens O'Brien profile for Stevie Richards. He's come from Formula Fords. He is the defending Privateers Cup champion. He uh, is the defending Privateer or Independence Cup champion in the Super Tourers as well. And there's his last four results. Not so good Barbagallo the best last weekend after he picked up that second in race three. Just look at that great shot of the front wheel of Steve Richards' car. Those little discs on the wheel are actually an additional cooling vein. They're designed to extract maximum heat from the front brakes because the brakes really do get a pounding around here. They never get a brake. They help choice of a better word, they never get a rest <laughs> around this circuit. There's a long straight followed by a dead stop corner, particularly down the back here. And there's another three very heavy brake applications, so they, they really never get a rest during a race. If you look at Seaton now, he's just pulling out the last lap he did was uh, fractionally quicker than both um, Bow and Ingle. Oh! Ingle's up the outside on Bow. Doesn't That's happen. a long way round. Had to close the door quickly. Stevie Richards was right there and right on Stevens tail as Alan Jones as well. So as the laps tick on, we've got plenty left. This is going to be fantastic. This Here's Ingle on bow again. This oh. is going to be exciting. We're going to definitely see something here. There's, uh, well, going by tradition so far, we're going to see some contact. Well, John Bow, look at that. Look at the amount of air he gets under the car. Spectacular shot there. But he just positions that Shell Helix Ford in exactly the position where Ingle needs to be. And we've seen Bow, fast master of this defensive driving and very very cool under pressure 170 kilometers an hour for Ingle and Bow as they turn into Scotch a curve you can see the battle damage on the shell forward Bow is really going to have to fight today don't forget plenty more motor racing action coming up on your home of motorsport network 10 of course this is the second last round the grand final is at Oran Park Sydney siders get yourself ready for that it's on the 3rd of August perhaps uh, get some Three uh, advanced tickets in advance, rather. It's going to be a very big day at Oran Park. Then coming up, the Tickford 500 at Sandown in September. And, of course, the Australian 1000, Mount Panorama, October 18-19. The crowd here at Malolo is anything to go by. It's going to be a full house. This place is absolutely jam-packed. Never seen a crowd like it. They're queuing up outside for kilometres down the road into Malolo. Unbelievable. I was talking to one of the officials that worked here for donkey's years and he said he's never seen as big a crowd as this since uh, the uh, 60s. Stephen Richards is really coming up on Russell Ingle now, so not only does Ingle have to focus on the front and try and get up there with John Bowen and get past oh, him, he's got to watch... Yeah, he gets a little bit out of shape. He's also got to watch Stephen Richards as well. Well, Larry Perkins, the gap between himself and race leader Murphy, 1.4 seconds, Greg's building on that again. Glenn Seaton now 3.2, so Murphy is sprinting away at the front. This has just been fantastic racing this year. I don't care what anybody says, this, if this ain't entertainment, nothing is. Murphy's going quicker all the time. He's just at a 1.0814 in this race. That was in his third lap, so he's undercut the lap record once again. So the Holden Racing Team Mobile Commodore, particularly of Murphy, absolutely flying. His teammate Peter Brock stuck back in ninth position. That's, that's really quick, Mark, for uh, Murphy. It's 0.4 of a second quicker than uh, the Larry Perkins on that lap. There's Peter Brock, 0.5. There is a top privateer as well, the Scots Transport Commodore of Mark Poole. He's just ahead of John Faulkner. 
And then in behind them, Tony Longhurst having some problems this weekend. Yeah, poor old Tony Longhurst has had a lot of problems all the year, hasn't he? Mark Poole, Scott's Transport Commodore, led by Scott's Transport based in Mount Gambier in South Australia. And the township really gets behind this entry. Mark, Mark was saying earlier, Mark Osler, that uh, everyone's saying, oh, you know, expecting me to go well this weekend because this is my home track, but he said he hasn't done any testing here since last October. So it's not as if he's been living here. It's amazing how little money they run on 167 kilometres an hour, the laser speed at the end of the start finish straight for Mark Poole. But yeah, a lot of these guys run on absolute shoestrings. They don't get a chance to, or the luxury of going out and testing things like shock resolve oh. on the set. I think you can see that wheel as it gets light turning into the corner just locked up a fraction and he's got John Faulkner bearing down on it now this is a battle for 10th and 11th position the Shell Hill X race score for you Murph he's clearing out and getting out of there he's leading the way in the mobile HRT Commodore Perkins, Seaton, Bow and Ingle this is the Shell Australian Touring Car Championship more after this oh look Welcome back to Malala Motorsport Park here in South Australia. There's your race leader, Greg Murphy, the number 15 mobile HRT Commodore. Perkins is still in second position. You can see there that shot illustrates the point very well, just how much of a gap that Murph has over Perkins. And here comes the rest. Have a look at Ingle and Bow and Stevie Richards. Yeah, well, Ingle's been all over Bow, lap after lap after lap. But John is just driving this line to within a millimetre of the previous one. He just keeps placing the car right down the centre of the road, breaking into the corner on the inside line. There's nowhere for Ingle to go. Look, he ducks around the outside, but there's nothing he can do about it out there. Trying that outside option into Bridgestone corner, then he tucks it back in to come through the S's. I guess Ingle might be getting a little bit frustrated, Barry. Well, I think so, you see. I guess what JB's doing, you know, he's, doing, he's not doing anything illegal. He's just frustrating uh, Russell Engel and, you know, knowing what Russell's like, he's going to get so frustrated that he could be tempted into sort of making a pass where you can't make a pass. But you've got to hand it to Engel on one, on one score at least is the psychological strength of him because everybody in their auntie has had a moan about him, but he comes out and he gets stuck in again. It's not like he's um, driving around on a Sunday afternoon drive, is it? You know, so, so that, as far as Engel is concerned, is a great strength. Well, Russell really is paying the price for that poor qualifying performance. He uh, had some dramas with set up in qualifying, couldn't get the car out the way he wanted. A qualified eight, he's spending the whole day battling back through the field. Keep in mind too, he was fastest in the warm up this morning. Today, uh, one minute seven. So the car very, very quick. Now he's boxed in behind Bowie. That will be causing maximum frustration for the Castrol driver. All the time that these two guys are finding it out. Things are going well for Glenn Seaton too because he's one position ahead. Seaton's still hanging on to that third position. It's a, it's a duplicate of race one, except I guess the only difference is Stevie Richards is ahead of Alan Jones. We have got six laps remaining. The Shell Helix Falcon, John Bow. Hard at work. He's fantastic to watch in the in the office, 158 kilometers an hour, really, really intense. Look, he's got that slightly hunched, very characteristic style he's had since he started in Turinco. He's really hunched over the wheel, keeps his arms bent very close up the wheel, very close up to his chest. And so the mirror very close to his eyes at this stage of the game, <laughs> I would say. Yeah, well, you can see him looking up, oh! looking up at Eagle as he applies maximum pressure coming out onto the back straight once again. They'll come through the shell curve, building up to 235, 240 kilometers an hour, up into six gear. See Bow, hard at work, breaking hard. It was interesting, Goodyear corner. interesting to hear him say yesterday that throughout the year, Les Laidlaw and the Shell Helix team, you know, they've been trying to sort out some little niggly problems with the Falcon. And when he was just plugging away, well, yeah, he was just trying to deal with it. Now he's in there with a shot for the championship. He said, it's amazing how your expectations on yourself change. He said, now I'm in there with a real shot. Well, the amazing thing from qualifying yesterday, like he was fifth or fifth fastest, and he was eight hundredths of a second off pole. Yeah, Look at Ingle, have a go there, riding the ripple strips. Yeah, when you talk to uh, John Bauer, I was talking to him earlier today, and he, he still has the same problems. Oh! <laughs> Get her up. How high can you go? Yeah, JB was saying that he still has the same sort of problems with mid-corner understeer and that, but he's he's driving around it, so you've got to hand it to him. But uh, Ingle is definitely having a go. Well, that was a, you couldn't get <laughs> a greater a indication than that. He got right up on that curve. That thing was like the whole precision driving team. Go back, position still remaining the same. Richards, Jones, Johnson. Brock has got himself into ninth, then Poole, Faulkner, Longhurst, Finnegan, White, Hossack, Smurden. The order has remained the same. Bow taking that 
inside line and they may have just caught up just ever so slightly to the Ford Credit Falcon of Glen Seaton. Larry Perkins at 2.4 seconds the gap between himself and Murphy, so Murphy building all the Ooh, time. Karen Shell, Brewer. Helix oh, yeah. replay. Karen Brewer in trouble down there at the Southern Loop. She she hang on to it? No, it's going round on her. Yeah, it looks like she managed to keep it off the walls and hopefully back into the race. Great drive from uh, Stephen Richards. He's staying in front of AJ and he's lost that little bit of ground now on Ingle. As we were saying before, it's a good confidence boost for him. He picked yeah. up that second last week and things are going well. And he was saying to Mark and myself this morning that they're just starting to find some momentum now. He's getting a pretty solid workover from AJ though. Well, if, gene if genetics really work, you know, he's can't have any better genes than his dad. Oh, really? Such an enthusiastic oh, team, the right. Gary Rogers Motorsport operation. And it looks like uh, there may have been a cast off car in there. So that interval between Bow and Ingle has opened up. They go down that back section of the circuit. And the gap between Bow and uh, Glenn Seaton has definitely closed up. So the field bunching up, Craig Murphy looks like he's well in control at the moment. Murphy lapping in the one minute, ten second bracket, but Seaton, Bow, Richards, plenty of them are the 109s. Let's look at John Bow's on the windscreens O'Brien driver profile. Shell Australian Touring Car Champion in 95, twice runner up at Bathurst. And first at Bathurst in 89 and 94. Eastern Creek 12 hour winner for Mazda. And they're his strongest positions. Two seconds, a first and a third. He really is one of the most consistent drivers in the country. Three laps left to run in race two. If you look at uh, John Bow's car, it definitely doesn't seem to be as loose as um, Glenn Seaton's car does. And the gap between Perkins and Seaton, you can see Perkins up there. Opened up quite a gap to Seaton earlier on, but looks like the gap may be closing. Keep an eye on that. Well, Greg Murphy has never had a clean sweep at a round of the Shell Australian Touring Car Championship. He did win two races at Simmons Plains in Tasmania in those dreadful conditions earlier this year. Peter Brockie's teammate won the other one that day. They got a mobile HRT 1-2. This could be Murph's day. He could get the clean sweep. JB is definitely going to have a go somewhere at Glen. It's much closer to Seaton. They break hard in the end of the back straight for Bridgestone Corner. Go on board with John Bow. Right behind the Ford Credit Racing Falcon. Two laps to go. Running out of opportunities on the 2.6 kilometre circuit. Try and make a passing opportunity. Seaton very much focused on the fact he just wants to beat Ingle and Bow today and keep building on that little points buffer he's got. The Dunlop in-car camera with John Bow. This is the closest that John's been to Glenn Seaton the entire race distance. Let's see what JB's got up his sleeve, whether he can he's throw down the arm. challenge. <laughs> <laughs> you always get me on that one, don't you? <laughs> It looks like uh, Seaton would have softened up the back of his car by the look of it, because if you look at it when he changes direction on it, the back end of the car is a hell of a lot softer now than it was before. XR Falcon on board camera. You're riding with Glenn Seaton, looking very, very cool, but he's under enormous pressure here. John Bow right behind him under brakes. Russell Engel looking for a way through as well. Seaton cranks on a whole armful of lock. Out of this corner, keeping Bow and Engel effectively boxed in. Time's running out. Time is... Getting away from us in this second race of three for today. The Ford Credit Falcon, Glenn Seaton. He has led in this championship for so long. Did, of course, have a bigger points buffer. It's now right down. Pressure's on, and we are on our way home as of now. The last lap board has gone out. And look how close. That's incredible. Ingle's done very well to claw his way back. Yep. John Bow right up there with Seaton also. I tell you what, if Fingal could get through there on the last lap, we call him Udini. Well, this is their opportunity. Their last opportunity, the final lap. Can Bow do anything about Seaton? And we go further back and Ingle about Bow. Yeah, it's very, very tight as they come down through the shell curve, the final time around. Look at that. Three in a row. This is a championship battle. Seaton, Bow and Ingle. Bumper to bumper. Through the shell curve, 235 kilometers an hour, breaking hard. There's Larry Perkins. Oh! oh, oh, oh goodness me! Dear me! Ingle went so deep under brakes, he locked the rears, he nudged into the back of Bow. Fortunately, Bow was able to keep going. 
Oh. And blokes are serious. He knew that that was his final opportunity. He had to do something about it. They come up into Bridgestone Corner now. They're nice and bunched up. This is the camera from the back of John Bow's car. Greg Murphy comes onto the main straight. Two wins from two starts today. Good on you, Greg Murphy and the Mobile HRT Commodore. In for the win. It's going to be close for that third spot. Perkins will get there for second and Seaton. So a replay of the first race there with our leading three in the championship. Seaton hangs on for that third spot. That was a great race. That was hot stuff. Terrific final lap. We uh, have got a replay of an earlier incident. This is the Russell Ingle incident trying the inside line. Now watch this, he's got everything locked up. He's coming down deep, deep, deep. Look at the back starting to come around. Cruncher, a little bum there. <laughs> Bow manages to hang on to it, gets half crossed up. Ingle backed out of it and allowed, uh, which allowed Bow to get back on the racing line. But boy, that was desperate stuff. The final placings for you on the Shell Helix race score. Greg Murphy, as I said, two from two so far today. Larry Perkins in for second, Seaton. Bow and Engel. We take a look back six through ten. Stephen Richards, well done. Dick Johnson ended up getting up there. Peter Brock, Mark Poole, and John Faulkner. Once again, Mark Poole, the top privateer.